Hello, I'm Stuart Winter, the platform architect for Slackware on the ARM platform, and this is the Slackware ARM podcast. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through setting up Slack package to keep your Slackware system up to date. Um, so I've got a Rock Pro 64 that I use as a daily driver, uh, in addition to my Pinebook Pro. And this one, I've been leaving um, a, in a bit of an abandoned state for a while, so I haven't updated it because I've been waiting to do this video. So there's a whole bunch of updates due. So let's get into it and I'll show you how to set up Slack package initially and then how to use it to keep the system up to date. Well, let's go. Okay, the first thing we need to do is configure Slack package. It has a file called mirrors and that tells Slack package where to download the Slackware assets from the packages and so forth. So let's configure that now. The file is forward slash etc slash slack package slack pkg slash mirrors. So you can load that up with your favorite editor. I'll use nano. Okay, I'm gonna just jump to the bottom of the screen and I'm gonna pick the UK mirror here. So I'll just uncomment that mirror there. Now, at the time of this recording, there is no stable release of Slackware ARCH64 because it's only just uh, been released into current development form a couple of months ago. So the only thing we have right now is Slackware64 current, but for future releases of Slackware ARCH64, you'll find within this file stanzas which are pre-configured for the release of Slackware that, uh, that you've installed. So it'll say here, Slackware, instead of saying Slackware current here, it'll say Slackware ARM64 15.1, for example. Okay, so again, I've uncommented this mirror here and you can pick some of the other mirrors if you wish. Okay, so I'll save that file. Now, I have a shell script that I use for this, which is called update OS. And there are four commands here that you use to keep your system up to date. The first thing that we need to do is to call Slack package with the update command. So let's do that now. So because this is the first time I've run Slack package on this machine, it's just confirming that I've configured the right repository in the mirrors file. Well, yes it is, so let's press Y. So Slack package update, it downloads the manifest files and various you know, bits of metadata about the packages. Um, it downloads all of that from the repository and keeps a local copy of it. So that way it knows what it downloaded last time and it can then compare that against what it finds in the repository when you call Slack package once again. Okay, so that's that done, let's see what's next. So install new. So I'm going to do this. Okay, so it's found a new package to install. So I'm going to say yes. So I'll press okay there. And it's going to download and install that package. Now it's asking here about configuration files. The easy way to deal with this is if you know that you personally edited one of the configuration files that it's asking about, then you probably want to use the K option. So you keep the old files and consider .new later. But that's only if you personally edited one of those files and you'd know if you did. For me on this system, I've edited absolutely nothing. It's a completely default installation. So what I'm gonna do is allow the new version of this default config to replace the previous version of a default config. So I'm gonna press O. But again, uh, if you didn't edit the config files, my suggestion is just to use O and overwrite them with the latest version. The reason why you use the install-new option for Slack package is because Slackware is built on a full system. So the way that we resolve any dependencies is by having a full installation of Slackware. So whenever you consume the latest updates of Slackware, you should always take the new packages, unless you really know what you're doing, in which case you, you, know, you can deselect those packages from installation. But typically for your average user, you probably just want to say yes and take anything that's new. Okay, so let's see what's next. So we've installed new packages and now we're gonna do an upgrade all. Okay, so as you can see, there are quite a number of packages to upgrade on this machine. And that's because 
First of all, that's because it's running Slackware current and there's quite a high frequency of change there. And secondly, it's because I haven't updated it in about three weeks. So there's quite a few packages. So I'm gonna just select all of them to be upgraded here. So I'm gonna press enter. And now Slack package is going to download all of the files from the mirror site, and then it will proceed to upgrade them. And this will take a while because there are several hundred megs of packages to download here. So as you can see, Slack package is asking again about some configuration files. And in this instance, I'm going to overwrite the old ones and replace them with the new ones. Okay, done. So that was Slack package upgrade all. So the final thing that we need to do here is to remove any packages that have been removed since the previous um, update to the Slackware repository. Now I know for a fact that some of them have been removed. So let's see what we do here. Yep. Aha, okay. The package that's been removed from Slackware is the kwayland server package. Now, one of the things that I'm really glad that this is showing us here. So by default, Slack package shows you any package which is no longer present within any of the repositories. Now, the only repository that we have configured is the Slackware, official Slackware repository for Slackware Arch 64. And in that case, yes, kwayland server has been removed from there. And what you see here is a package called Slack Kit, which is actually part of the Slackware ARM build system. And it's because, however, that package Slack Kit is not part of the official repository, it's presenting it here to be removed because it's, you know, it's not present in that repository. So it thinks that it's a candidate for removal. So I'm going to deselect Slack Kit because I want to have that installed on this machine because I'll turn it into a build server once we finish this video. So if you have any packages like Slackkit that aren't part of the official repositories, you know, perhaps they're packages that you compiled locally, for example, there is a way that you can mask these out. You can blacklist them out of um, Slack package so that they aren't considered as candidates for removal, which is what I recommend you do. You can look at the documentation for that. It explains how to do it. But I'm just going to deselect Slackkit like that and leave K Wayland server in because that is a, uh, a package that should be removed. So let's press OK. OK, so there we go. And, and that was it. OK, so the packages have all been upgraded and one of the packages has been removed. Now, one of the things that we'll see here is that we are running Linux 5.18.4, but as part of this upgrade, uh, packages kernel. As part of this upgrade, you'll see that we've upgraded to Linux 5.18.6. Now, if you're familiar with Slackware on x86-64 platform, you'll know that you are supposed to run a command called gen initrd to update the initial RAM disk. However, on the ARM platform, it's much easier. All you need to do is just upgrade the packages. Even if you've customized the initial RAM disk, with one of the, some files in slash boot slash local, for example, even just upgrading the packages will rebuild the initial RAM disk with those customizations. So everything's automatic. You just need to upgrade the packages and that's it. So what we'll do now is reboot. As you can see, the bootloader is now loading the kernel and the initial RAM disk and is booting the kernel and the OS is now booting. Okay, so the system has booted and let's log into it. What you're looking at here is the serial console of the Rock Pro 64. Okay. Right, so, oh, we can see yeah already. So you can see that the kernel has been upgraded to Linux 5.18.6. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is show you the Slackware change log. 
because one of the things that you do need to pay attention to, particularly for Slackware Current, is the entries in the change log. The change log is where we talk to you and say, hey, here's something you need to be aware of. Here's something you need to do manually, perhaps. So what I'm going to do is show you the change log as it is. So there's a command. Let's have a look. There's a command called show change log. So let's have a look at that. Everything here, all of this has been applied to this system. OK, so uh, for this video, I've also just literally pushed out a new set of updates so I can show you how the change log works. OK, so first of all, we're going to run the command slack package update, which will download the latest change log. So let's hit enter on that. OK, and run Slack package show change log again. OK, as you can see, there are new updates to be applied. There's nothing added. There's nothing removed, though. Uh, and in this case, there isn't anything in the change log that we need to be aware of. There's, there's no notes uh, whatsoever. But if we scroll down a bit further down into some of the previous updates, you'll see that uh, a little bit further down here we go yeah you'll see some uh, some notes here um, about you know um, some of the, the experimentation I've been doing in the, on, on the port and that kind of thing and there's some notes um, in other batches about how to make certain changes and things so it's always important to have a look at the change log before you apply the updates in case there's anything you need to do before you apply the updates or subsequent to, uh, to applying the updates okay so, but what we're going to do this time, let's just run the shell script and let it do its thing. So it'll do the update again. Uh, just press no, actually, in that case, because we've literally just done that part of it. OK, so there we go. It's presented the packages that you saw. Let's just hit enter and upgrade all of those. So it'll download those. Shouldn't take too long uh, going at this speed. OK, so it's downloaded everything from the mirror site on the Internet and it's now upgrading the packages, as you can see. In this particular batch, there aren't any kernel packages. There's a kernel firmware package, but that doesn't require a reboot. It's only the kernel uh, packages, uh, the base package and the kernel modules package that uh, actually require a reboot to use those. So we just wait for those to install. As you can see again, Slack package has presented the Slack kit package as a candidate for removal. And again, as I said before, ordinarily I would mask this out and that's something I will set up afterwards. Um, but let's deselect that because I don't want to remove that. That is a local package. OK, and we are done. So let's run the Slack package commands again, but manually this time, just to make sure that there are no updates. So just no. And install new there shouldn't be anything to install there you go there's nothing to be done and that's it we are done so we've been through two rounds of package updates on the first round we rebooted into a new linux kernel and on the second round there were just some packages to uh, to upgrade but we don't need to reboot so as you can see it's pretty easy to to set up slack package and to use it and keep the system up to date um, you, I suggest just putting those commands into a script. That's what I do. The next question that we typically get is when and how often should you update your system? I always suggest for stable releases such as 15.0 to look at the change log. If there are any critical fixes or any security fixes, update the system at that moment in time and apply all the patches. If there's a kernel update, you know, update that kernel and reboot the system. So that's for stable releases. For, the, for Slackware current or the, or the development version, um, what I do is typically for my system, whether it's x86 or ARM, uh, the one that I'm using as a daily driver, if there aren't any critical or security bug fixes in current, I typically just do it every once or every, every two weeks and then reboot the system and I have an up-to-date system. That works well for me. I've been doing that for the last several years. Um, so that's what I recommend. But, you know, if you want to, for current, if you want to keep up with the bleeding edge, then you can just update it every day if you like. Um, Slackware ARCH64 runs 
chiefly on a monthly drop. So usually I'll do one big round of updates of Slackware and, and drop them into current. Sometimes I do them more readily, uh, maybe once a week or, or even sometimes once every few days. Depends on you know what my workload is. Okay, so that's how you use Slack package on your system. I hope this video has been useful to you. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.